Hey guys, uh, we're going to go over how to set up a air shifter with Holly EFI. The, uh, it's pretty simple, it just involves one single output. But, uh, but anyway, so if you've got a turbo car or something with CO2 on board, you've probably got a CO2 tank. Uh, I set the regulator to about 115 pounds and I don't regulate it down for my boost control solenoids or anything, I just let it ride at 115 psi. Uh, that's what the uh, the shifter that I use calls for is about 100. So you've got yourself a Mac valve right here. This one is for the uh, the shifter, and then the other one above it is for the parachute launch handle. But um, same principle for that as well. So you got CO2 in on the right side, and then uh, CO2 out to your shifter on the left, and then there's a, a little muffler there. So Wiring wise, all that thing requires is 12 volt and ground. So you can go about it two different ways, but you can either take your switched 12 volt from somewhere like a smart wire, or if you've got like a relay board or something that turns on with ignition, um, or, or you can use a uh, H type output from the ECU to send power, to actually, you know, have hold power on it all the time, and then use a, a ground activated output to trigger at a certain RPM, which I'm about to show you all how to do. But anyway, almost all the air shifters are the same. These little Bemba cylinder underneath the shifter. It's got air going into it and it clicks it into high gear at whatever desired RPM. So I'm gonna show you how to program it. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so we got our shift solenoid mounted, it's all plumbed, and now we need to wire it up and uh, program it. So open up Holly V5 and uh, just open up a global folder that you're working with and open up your input output ICF. If you do not have this ICF already, uh, in order to add an ICF, you just go into toolbox, add individual config, and then click IO and click whichever one you want. If you don't have all these in here, uh, you'll be base config. So, all right, go to outputs here and you'll create one. Let's just create a new one here. Uh, we'll call it shifter. We're going to enable it. And depending on how you wire this, right? So you're either gonna send a 12 volt or ground to activate it. So this is your activation type for your output. So for this, we're gonna do ground, okay? We're gonna configure this output. Uh, so you could do this a, a couple different ways, but the one thing you wanna, you definitely wanna do is a sensor input trigger and it'll activate at, I do them off RPM. Scroll down here. Is above, say we want the car to shift at 8,000. So, and then we can deactivate it at 7900. Um, you can add some other caveats in here too if you want and uh, you can say uh, this output will activate when boost time which is how long in the run is above you know whatever 2.0 seconds and then deactivate at uh, 2.1. So that means it'll click the shifter at two seconds um, above 8000 rpm. So I, I like to use this second, um, I like to use this second uh, input here so that if it knocks the tires off on the hit, it doesn't try to shift the car into high gear and create a ton of wheel speed that you can't recover from. So using a second um, scenario here to activate it with, you know, a two, it won't activate until two seconds. And I'm not telling you to use two seconds. I don't know when your car is supposed to shift from low to high. So don't hold me to this. These are just examples. I'm not telling you to spin your stock, you know, 60 LS to 8,000 RPM either. So just an example. Um, but this will, this is how you program your, uh, your, your output to activate. So once you've programmed your output, right? So we've got our output here, shifter, it's a ground type. We've already configured it. It's not defined though, so we have to locate it in the pin map. So go to pin map, go to view outputs. Here we go, shifter. 
right? It's a ground type output. So you just grab that, drop it to whatever pin we're using. Now this is something that you can do with these small solenoids, these Mac valves. Um, if you don't have an easy, clean, you know, place to grab power from, then what you can do on these small solenoid, on these small Mac valves, is you can actually power them from the ECU. So hit done. And we're going to do this. I'm going to do shifter power enable. We're going to change this over here to a 12 volt. Hit OK. Configure. And we're going to do a sensor input. And this is going to activate when the battery is above 10 volts. Um, and deactivate it, whatever, say 9.9. .9. So now we're going to have 12 volt on, see this shifter power here? We go to outputs. There's shifter power. So if we ran two wires, one from B10 and one from B11, to our shift solenoid, we're done. We don't have to tie into any other ignition source. Um, I, I do. I power some small stuff, typically like this. Like I, I power the injector driver box like this. I, I power the profiler. Um, I power a couple different things like this. But um, EGT box gets power from the ECU. Uh, boost control gets power from it, um, but <clears throat> don't try to power something large, right? It's just these little Mac valves, something that's very low amperage draw. It's two amp max on these circuits, so don't push it, you know? Um, but it's a, some, it's an, an easy, clean way to wire the car so that you've just got two wires coming out of the ECU and going straight to your, your Mac valve to activate your shifter or to activate your uh, parachute release or whatever it may be. <clears throat> so uh, hopefully that explains it, and um, hopefully you, you guys have understood it. If you have any questions, let me know, um, and make sure you subscribe so that I can stop having to post links to videos that I've made explaining how to do all the things you guys ask.